Today, I'm going to show you how to make an animated flag in Unreal and Unity. Let's go! So the video that I made last week was about an hour long and it was really complicated, so I decided to do something a little bit simpler this week. So we're going to create this animated flag. Now you might be thinking, oh wow, Ben's going to show us how to do cloth simulation, uh, eh, but no. Um, what I want to show you how to do is something really simple and really cheap that you can add to your scene that will make things feel more alive, um, but without using a lot of system resources. This is an animated flag that just uses a sine wave and some simple vertex animation, and it doesn't kill the performance of your machine like cloth, an uh, like cloth simulation would. Um, so let's just jump in and get started. So I'm going to right click here and pick create shader graph hdrp lit shader graph so we're going to start out in uh unity today and then we'll switch over to unreal in a few minutes and i'll show you how to, how to create the same thing there so i'm going to call this animated flag and i'll double click on it and we'll just jump right in okay now usually when i show these shaders in unreal and unity um they're fairly similar but today's is going to be a little bit different because um, in Unity, to control vertex position, we pass a vertex position in offset, uh, in object space. And in Unreal, we do a world position offset. And so these shaders are going to look a little bit different from each other. Um, but I'll show you what I mean when we get there. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do in Unity is bring in the object space position. So I'm just going to type position. And we'll bring in our position node. And by default, it's going to be in world space. But this time, I'm going to put it in object space uh, just to make things a little bit simpler. All right, now the next thing that I need to do is split this out. So I'm going to bring in a split node. And what I'm doing here is accessing the X position and the Y position of the vertices of my mesh uh, in object space. So if we take a look at our scene again, Here's this mesh, and you can see that it's just uh, a flat plane of triangles. And you can make something like this in Blender or Maya or, or whatever software you're using. Um, just make sure that it's kind of the right aspect ratio for a flag, and that you've got enough subdivisions to show some smooth movement. All right, so we're going to split this out. And then at the end, we're going to combine the values back together. Uh, after we've added in our offset. So I'll add a combine node here, and I'm gonna take the uh, X position of the vertices and the Y position of the vertices, and we're just gonna pass those straight through. Because what we want to do is move our flag uh, on the Z axis. You can see that's where this wave animation is happening. And what I wanna do is use a sine wave but have the sine wave be in different points of the wave depending on uh, where we are in our X position. And so in the shader, I'm gonna take the X position and I can multiply it by a value right here. And this value will control the wave length. Um, uh, I'll just set it for, I'll just set it to eight right now. And then we can mess around with it later if we choose to do that. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is add time. So I'm gonna put an add node here. And we'll add our time in as well. Now, as usual, we can always multiply time by a value that will control our speed. And in this case, uh, I'm gonna say our multiplication is gonna be eight right here. So we're gonna do time multiplied by eight and then added together with the X position uh, of our flag. And what this is doing is it's creating a phase. Uh, so along the length of our flag here, we're putting uh, each of the vertices into its own unique phase uh, based on how far along the flag we are. And now what we can do with that phase is pass it into a sine wave. And so now you can see there's a nice animated preview here of what that's gonna look like. 
And if we wanted to, uh, we could just take this and we can use this as the uh, Z position of our vertices. So instead of passing Z from here, I'm generating Z uh, with these nodes here. Okay, now I can take the RGB output value of this, which is the X, Y, and Z position of my verts, and pass that into our object space position. And there is the very most basic part of our shader. So I'm just gonna save this and we'll apply this in our scene. So I'll come down here to animated flag and just grab this material and drag it on. And you can see right away that we are getting some animation, but it's a little bit crazy. So let's go back to our shader and fix that. All right, so what we were seeing is that our strength was a little bit too much. Um, the sine wave was creating some really big waves. And so to fix that, all we have to do is add a multiply node right here, and we can kind of tone this down a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do is just, instead of multiplying this by two, I'm gonna multiply it by 0 0.3, just to kind of weaken this effect and make the offset not quite as small. So we have a couple of values we can use to control this. This value coming in here, we could call our wave length. This value here is our speed. And then this value over here, we could call our scale. Uh, so we're scaling the effect by 0 0.3. So let me save this and we'll switch back and take a look at our result. Okay, now you can see we're getting something a little bit more manageable. But there is one problem here Normally, our flag would be attached to a flagpole over here on the left side, but you can see there's a lot of movement happening over there. And what we want to do is scale the movement depending on how close to the flagpole it is. So when we're attached to the flagpole, we want zero movement. And then the further away from the pole that we get, we want the movement to be stronger. And so in order to simulate that effect, all I need to do is take this multiply node and we're gonna grab the X position here. So how far along uh, that X position we are, which is kind of going from left to right here. We're gonna pull this down and I'm gonna negate it and then I'm gonna saturate it. And then I'm gonna use that as my input value here. So instead of just uh, 0.3, we're gonna do 0.3 multiplied by this mask that I've created uh, with the distance away from the pole. So there's my 0.3, and I'm gonna pass that in here. So here you can see I've got a distance coming from uh, starting at zero where the pole would be and going along that x-axis, and I had to negate it because it's actually going in the opposite direction. And then we'll saturate it so that it's between zero and one, and then we'll multiply it by this value that controls uh, the overall strength of the effect. All right, so let's clean our graph up here just a little bit, and now let's take a look at our result. Yeah, there we have it. Now we have a nice looking flag. Okay, now there's two last things that I wanna do. Uh, one is, uh, if we come around here and look at the opposite side of the flag, you can see that it's invisible. And then the other one is that we have sort of a generic color here. So let's come on back in here. And for the color, I'm just gonna grab this and we're gonna make it sort of a green color. And I'll hit save. And then the other thing is that the back of it was invisible. And so for that, I'm gonna open up my graph inspector and go to graph settings. And then I'll come down here and find this double-sided mode. And for that, I'm just gonna say enabled. And so this is gonna tell the engine to render both sides of the flag. Yeah, so now we have a nice green flag. It's waving in the wind. It's not moving on the side where it's gonna be attached to the flagpole. And if we come around the other side, you can see that it's rendering double-sided. All right, so like I said at the beginning, this is a super cheap effect. I'm not using any CPU resources. This is all just running uh, in the vertex shader. 
and it's extremely uh, cheap to render. And this is the kind of thing that you could add just as a little accent. You know, you put a flag somewhere, makes your scene feel more alive uh, and just adds that nice little kick of motion to the scene uh, without using a whole lot of budget. This is the kind of effect that would work just fine on a mobile phone. You know, you're not, you're not spending a whole lot of resources creating this, but it does add a little bit of life to your scene. All right, cool. Let's switch over to Unreal and I'll show you how to do the same thing there. All right, so here we are in Unreal, and we're gonna go ahead and build that same animated flag shader here. So the first thing that we need to do is bring in the position of the vertices of the flag, and we want the local position. In Unity, this is called object space position, and in Unreal, they're calling it local position. And so we're gonna bring in the position of the object, and then we want the X coordinate, or the X position, and so we're going to add a component mask node here and just mask out uh, the red channel. So here we have red, green, blue, and alpha, and I'm just choosing the red. That's the X position of the vertices or the position of the vertices here from left to right on the flag. All right, and now we need a time node. So I'm going to type time. And again, we can use a multiply node here to control the speed of our time. And in my case, just for now, I'm gonna use a speed of negative one. Uh, and this is something that we can control more later if we want to. Then we're gonna add our X position of our vertices to time. And this is setting up our phase. So each of the vertices along the X axis is going to be a slightly phase offset. And this is what's gonna create our wave form. So now uh, what we can do is add our sign node. There's our sign and that will give us a nice wave and it's gonna give us a wave along the X axis. And now what I need to do, uh, I'm going to eventually be passing these values into world position offset here. And so what I need to do is take our sine wave here and create a vector out of it. And so I'm going to multiply our sine uh, by a vector three. So I'll add a multiply node, then I'll hold down the three key and click to give myself a vector three. And we want the... Um, we want the vertices to be offset on the Y axis, um, but not on the other two axes. And so I'm just going to give myself a value of 15 here on the Y and leave the other two at 0, 0. So I'm going to multiply this vector here by 0, 15, 0. And now I can pass this into my world position offset node. And if we save it and take a look at the result, Cool, now you can see that we have a nice animated flag and our vertices are moving in the Y direction and they're phase offset along the X direction, just like we told them to do. But just like the issue that we were having in Unity, uh, we're doing the, the, a nice wave all the way along the flag, even in the spot here where it should be uh, a value of zero where it's right next to or attached to the flagpole. And so in order to take care of that, we can take our local position mask here and multiply that in. And what that will do is set our movement to zero where the flag is attached to the pole. And then uh, everywhere else, uh, it'll be animated. So I'm just gonna take my output here and add another multiply. And we're just gonna multiply by uh, the vertex's position along that x-axis. So if we pass this into our world position offset and save. All right, so bingo, now we have a flag that's not animating here where it's attached to the pole. And then the further along that x-axis we go, uh, the stronger the animation becomes, uh, just like a real flag would behave. All right, so let's take a look at our shader here. Again, 
we have our time multiplied by the speed that we want things to go. If I wanted this to animate a whole lot faster, uh, I could multiply it by something like five. Yeah, and now you can see that our flag is kind of going crazy here. I think it looks better when it's just set to a uh, negative one. Yeah, so we're just kind of softly, softly blowing our flag in the breeze there. All right. Now, there is one other thing that we could do here. We, we've got our movement happening in the x-axis, but we could also add a little bit of z movement here if we wanted to make our flag a little bit, our movement a little bit more interesting. So let's see what happens if we set our y movement to 15 and our z movement to something like 10. Uh, we might get a little bit more um, interesting flag behavior here. Let's just see what we get. Okay, cool. So now we're actually animating the vertices of our flag on two different axes. So this is something that we could play around with. Um, kind of moving it up and down and left and right at the same time. Maybe if I tone this down a little bit, set it to five. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, I think I liked it the best when it was just animating on that one single axis though. So let's just set this back to zero. And then last a couple of things that we need to do are, um, we need to come over here to our settings on our base node, and we need to set this to two-sided so that the flag will render in the background, or uh, from the other side, rather. And we also need to add a color. So I'm just gonna hold down three and click, and I'm gonna set this color. Just like in Unity, we had it set to kind of a greenish color. So I'll wire that right into the base color here. Right, so now we have a flag that renders on both sides. Very nice, and we have a green color. Now obviously if we wanted to, we could uh, add a texture to our flag and, and uh, use uh, the, the flag of uh, any specific nationality. Um, but in this case, I'm just gonna leave the flag uh, green the way that it is. All right, so that's our tutorial today. I hope you like this. It's something that you could use to add a little bit of life to your scene, and it's really cheap because all the math is being done in the vertex shader. Um, so it's not heavy on your CPU like, uh, like a cloth simulation would be. Um, this is an effect that would work just fine uh, on a mobile phone even um, because of uh, how inexpensive it is. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Uh, be sure to come back next week. I'll have more shader tutorials for you, um, for you to continue on your learning journey. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you later.